In this video, we'll look at the difference between dominant, oppositional, and emerging values. In a previous video in this series, we looked at social values as opposed to a discourse and a social issue but now we need to have a deeper look into certain aspects and the complexity of social values themselves. But before we do that, there are two key things that we need to know whenever we are analysing uh, society's values. The first of which is that social values should be expressed as a that statement. So we need to use the word that before we begin to explain what the social value is. An example might be, in 1950s America, the social value was that homosexuality was an illness and morally wrong. The second rule is that whenever we are analysing social values, we need to take our own subjective opinion and put it to the side. When we're analysing social values, you probably will feel passionate one way or the other about the values that we're looking at, but we need to put that to the side and look at these objectively. When thinking about values, we can place them into two really broad categories. The first of which are absolute values. These are the values that are seen as being fundamental to the functioning of society. They stay relatively unchanged over time and there are things that help us all function as a society. A value such as that murder is wrong or that we all deserve an equal opportunity. Alternatively, there are relative values. These are those that might change depending on the individual or the cultural subgroup or perhaps even the context in which we find ourselves. So these could be values such as that TV is bad for children, or that teenagers should respect their parents and teachers. Now up until this point we've been talking about social values as if society as a whole holds one value at any given time. Now we know that that's not the case. There are constant arguments and protests in society. Uh, people's values change all the time. And it's why we have things like political elections where certain political parties are elected by the slimmest of margins. As a society at the whole, we don't always agree on everything. So when we're talking about social values, we need to understand the difference between the different types of values who holds them and when. And the three types of social values that you need to know the definition of are dominant values, oppositional values, and emerging social values. The dominant value in society is the belief that is held by the majority of people in that society at that time. Now majority might be 51% or it might be 99%. Whatever it is, the dominant value is the one that's held by the most people. Alternative to that, the oppositional value is the value that is positioned strongly against the dominant value. Now this is not held by the majority and might only be held by a few people in society, or it might be held by 49% of society. Either way, it is strongly positioned against, it is the polar opposite of the dominant value. Finally, an emerging value is one that is steadily growing in popularity in a society. It is not necessarily new, but it's certainly growing. So an emerging value might be positioned with the oppositional value, or it might be a value that is really closely aligned to the dominant value that just has a slight tweak to it. Consider this example around the three types of social value when it comes to the discourse of school uniform. Certainly at our school, the dominant value is that wearing the school uniform and wearing it correctly is important. The oppositional value might be along the lines of school uniforms are not important and that we should all wear casual clothes. 
you can see how it is directly opposed to the dominant value. Whereas an emerging value, one that's growing in popularity, would be something like that school uniform's important, but girls should have the option of wearing pants as part of that uniform. You can see how it's actually aligned with the dominant value, but just with a slight tweak. Another example in the discourse of homosexuality in our context of America in the late 1950s, early 1960s, would be the dominant value as homosexuality is a mental illness and a sin. Opposed to that, the oppositional value would be that homosexuality is perfectly normal. And an emerging value at the time could be something like that homosexuality isn't a threat and should be tolerated. Now that emerging value might not be the only emerging value at the time. There could be other emerging values that homosexuality should be eradicated. So that one's much more closely aligned to the dominant value. So sometimes when we're looking at social values and particularly emerging values, it's important to understand that there aren't only just three values at any given time. And as we know, social values change over time. So if we look at homosexuality in the context of America today, we now see that the dominant value is that homosexuality is okay and certainly accepted. Whereas the oppositional value would be that homosexuality is a sin. We have now changed those dominant and oppositional values from the 1950s to today. And an emerging value might be that homosexuality is not just accepted in adults, but it's something that we see young people go through and that they should be supported as well. Hi, I'm Jude. And I'm gay. You know what, I don't think I can keep doing this. I know. You won't have to. Promise. Because I am super gay. For you. And although the dominant, oppositional and emerging values are the three most important ones for us to know as part of this area of study, there is a fourth type of social value that we should also know. And that's what's called a traditional value. If we think about the oppositional value and dominant value being polar opposites to one another, a traditional value is one that sits in polar opposite to the emerging value. It is something that has been held in society over a long period of time. We're talking hundreds of years. And these traditional values might be those that we see tied to older institutions like schools or like the church. Forgive me, Dr. Jacobs. Are you an MD? A PhD. A PhD? Yes, sir. In psychology? No, sir. Theology? No. Social work? I have a PhD in English literature. I'm asking because on your show, people call in for advice and you go by the name Dr. Jacobs on your show. And I didn't know if maybe your listeners were confused by that and assumed you had advanced training in psychology, theology, or healthcare. I don't believe they are confused, no, sir. Good. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery, as sanctioned in Exodus 21.7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? While thinking about that, can I ask another my chief of staff, Leo McGarry, insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35.2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police? Here's one that's really important, because we've got a lot of sports fans in this town. Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean. Leviticus 11.7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? 
Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? One last thing. While you may be mistaking this for your monthly meeting of the ignorant, tight-ass club, in this building, when the president stands, nobody sits. So all types of values can be embedded in media texts and often they appear as part of the representation of certain characters. So we'll find that there are dominant, oppositional, emerging and traditional values as represented in different characters. When we're actually analysing media texts and how they reflect society's values, we look to our production elements so camera acting, mise-en-scene, editing, lighting, sound, and also in the script and the dialogue itself. Here we can find examples to show exactly how those four different social values are represented and whether they are presented to the audience in a positive or a negative way. So when media texts are created, the producers embed social values in them, but it's important to remember that whenever something is created in the media, it's created with an audience in mind. So this means that typically in the mainstream media, the text will uphold the dominant values at the time because they are aimed at appealing to the majority of society at that time. You know something, Archie? Just because a guy is sensitive and, and, and he's an intellectual and he wears glasses, you make him out of queer. I never said a guy who wears glasses is a queer. A guy who wears glasses is a four-eyes. A guy who is a fag is a queer. <laughs> However, you will find that there will be some media texts, particularly those that are targeted at a younger audience, that will be oppositional in nature, in that they will present things from an oppositional values point of view and try to engage a subsection of the audience to appeal to their values. All I'm saying is If that... Jack is gay, he does not need your judgment, young man. The Lord above will be the one to judge him, as he will all of us. What he needs from you, from me, from everyone else in this world is love and tolerance. So how do we know which character or which text is presenting the dominant oppositional or emerging points of view? That's when we actually need to start looking at other evidence from other cultural artifacts at the time. These could be things like surveys and statistics and interviews, the laws that have been passed at the time. They could be policies and the state of beliefs of the government at the time. We could look at other media texts from the same culture and period. We might look at social movements or protests that were happening at the time. Or we could look at news reports and coverage of social issues in the press that run alongside the media texts that we're looking at. And when we start weighing all of those things together, that's when we can actually make some educated decisions about which values at the time were dominant, oppositional, emerging and traditional. So you can start practicing some of these skills yourselves by watching perhaps your favorite TV show or movie and try to identify in it what the dominant, oppositional, emerging and traditional values are and whether they're presented in a positive or a negative way. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. And of course, like and share if you would like to see more of these types of videos. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.